Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. And now, here's your host, Madeline Roberts. Hello, everybody. It's Monday night, and that means Sooner Sports Pad. Thank you for joining us. I am your host, Madeline Roberts, and as always, I'm with two great co-analysts. This time, I'm with Colin Kennedy and Reagan Ledbetter, and of course, your favorite part of the show, our great live studio audience. Oh, yeah. Guys, who's joining us today? Yes, we have some rowdy members of Alpha Gamma, Delta, and Young Life here as always. Man, they are loud and rowdy tonight, and they should be, because we have two members of OU Track and Field here tonight, Vernon Turner and Jess Woodard, fresh off the Big 12 Indoor Championships. Should be a fun show. Hey, later on, we go one-on-one -on -one with superstar Maggie Nichols. And also, we'll talk about OU Baseball and their bounce-back weekend just a couple days ago. After six straight losses, the OU men's basketball team got back on track on Saturday with a huge win over Kansas State here in Norman. It was a collective effort from the Sooners. Trey Young bounced back from Monday's loss to Kansas. The freshman had 28 points on 7 of 10 shooting, plus 7 assists. Christian James contributed 15 points, while Brady Manick and Jermani McNeese each added 10 for the Sooners. It was an overall good shooting day for OU. They shot 53% from the field overall and 62% in the second half. It was a much needed win for the Sooners to strengthen their resume as the NCAA tournament approaches. Like I said, Trey Young bounced back after a tough outing against the Kansas Jayhawks. Reagan, how was his performance in Saturday's game? You know, Trey Young, I think, is back, but this team is also back as well, Colin. I mean, yeah. I have been on this team a lot this season. Yeah. And this is the first time I've actually seen smiles in a very, very, very long time. They needed a win, and they got a big one over Kansas State on Saturday night. They got embarrassed in Lawrence on Monday and finally turned things around. Trey hit his season average like a nail on the head with 28 points, a big night for him. Lawn switched the lineup around, and it really has paid off as guys are finally starting to step up and get things turned around. Jamani with the big night, 10 points. Christian James, 15 points. And Brady Manick added 10 as well, who struggled as of late, so big for them. But the message after the game from Lon Kruger was, we, this is just one win. We kind of got to keep things going yeah. moving forward. So that's kind of the message right now. But they have a big one on Tuesday night as they head down to Waco to take on Baylor, who is playing pretty, pretty well right now. Yeah, so it's a big game coming yeah. up on Tuesday, heading down to Waco. They also have their final home game of the season on Friday against Iowa State. That's going to be a big game as well. Pad that resume. Things are, things are looking up right now, though. Exactly. Recently saw a little bracket prediction. They could be the eight seed from what I've seen, heading to Pittsburgh to play on NC State. That's the most recent projection. I love That'd Pittsburgh. Be, yeah, you're a big fan of Pittsburgh. But hey, Reagan, I've got another uh, freshman stud from Norman North to talk Let's about. Hear it. Her name's Caitlin Milligan, OU women's golfer, and she's putting up big time numbers. She is currently setting standards. Take a look at this. She shot a 62 at the Westbrook Invitational. That is 10 under par. That is the lowest score in program history and also the lowest in Division I women's golf so far this season. And also on top of that, she birdied 10 times five of her last seven. And I really do think we need to start a petition to get her a stat tracker just like Trey Young. She's putting up big numbers. People are going to want to pay attention to her. Big time stuff from the freshman. She had a better weekend than Tiger, that's for sure. Yeah, freshman from Norman North. It's something about him. But the power of Norman the North. Wow. Right up the road. That is Bring fantastic. Them right to Congrats Local to her. Wow. Well, another OU team that got a win this weekend was the women's tennis team. Yeah. Sports pads Kyle Payne caught up with tennis player Christy Brigante on Kyle's Corner. Welcome to Kyle's Corner. My name's Kyle Payne. I'm here with senior tennis player Christy Brigante. Tell me today about that big comeback win from your guys' team. I mean, to come back... To start off, losing the doubles point is always really tough. Um, you know, winning four singles sounds like it's like not that big of a difference between winning three, but it actually really is when there's only six matches going on. So for the team to kind of pull out a W after that, it was kind of surprising, but I'm really proud of us for it. You and Jasmine As Asgar remain 4-0 and on the season in doubles. What's that like building this chemistry from match to match with her? It's really great. I mean, I like that she doesn't take it too seriously. You know, we kind of take it lightly. Um, obviously, still playing pretty intense, and I think that's kind of where we find the chemistry in it. Like, we miss a bad shot, we just laugh it off, and it's kind of keep flowing, and you just don't dread on it. Like, you don't dwell on it. That's English. <laughs> <laughs> so, four-game winning streak right now. What are you guys doing to stay so hot on the court? Honestly, it's just kind of maintenance right now. Um, season gets pretty long. We've got about 25 matches, I think, somewhere around there. Then your body can get pretty beat up, and I think the best thing that we can do is just kind of maintain. Don't overtrain. If you've got something nagging, you got to get it done. As you can hear from my voice, it's, it's been a lot of yelling and it's been a lot of nagging on that. But, yeah, it's just keeping going and, and trying to continue with that. 
no. not, not do too much. Losing your voice so much, do you kind of see yourself as one of the vocal leaders for this team? I hear you yelling, let's go Sooners, a lot more than maybe some of the other girls on the team. Yeah, I'm not shy at all. I'm very, very, very loud. I mean, after every match, I usually lose my voice, but um, I I'm, I'm embrace it. I really like it. It kind of helps me if I'm in a match and, and I'm not doing so well or I feel like I'm getting too in my head to kind of yell, and it's a good way of kind of cathartic yeah, yelling. Yeah, to get you fired up and to get the team fired up. Yeah, exactly. It lets me release a little bit of energy. Okay, and last question, being from Florida, what was it like to play some other Floridians today? Was it nice to see their tans all year round? <laughs> you, you missed that a little bit. A little jealous, a little jealous. It was actually really nice. It kind of was a taste of home, um, but at the same time, you know, my, my sister went to Florida State, my mom went to Florida, so for us, they're still a rival. So it was kind of nice to get the W, even though I'm not playing for either of their schools, but it was nice having a little piece of home, but also nice to win and, and, and beat home. Well, thank you so much, and good luck on the rest of the season. Thank you so much. As you can probably tell, this past weekend was jam-packed with Sooner sports and Sooner wins. And, Reagan, I hear the women's basketball team had one of those big wins. Yeah, before the men's game on Saturday, Sherry Cole and the Sooner women got a big 79-61 to win over those Red Raiders from down in Lubbock in the final home game for the fan favorite, Maddie Manning. She put up a big 16 points, a big day for her. OU held Texas Tech to just four points in the first quarter. Yes, four points in a quarter. A big, big game for them. Lady Lev the entire way. This team has kind of really turned things around as of late, and that's big for them heading into the you know postseason. They've clinched a third place spot in the Big 12, but they have a big matchup with Texas and Austin, number six, on Tuesday night. A not a fun team to play. Yeah, that but, team in burn orange, we don't like to talk yeah, about. Yeah, things are looking up for this team right now. But hey, it'll be fun to see if they can carry that momentum over into Austin, Texas. But hey, also, I told you last time around that I was telling Kenneth Adair, our other analyst, our studio audience will remember, that OU Baseball would bounce back coming up this weekend. And guess what? <laughs> you they right. did just that. You were right. They did just that. OU split their doubleheader on Saturday, but then on Sunday dominated in game one and in game two walked it off to walk away from the weekend with three more wins in the win column. Standout performances include Jake Irvin, who struck out 11 in his first start at Eldale Mitchell here in Norman, and Brandon Zaragoza, who sent a single to right field, who walked it off because Sundays, Reagan Ledbetter, are for walk-offs. Big wins. Saturdays Big wins. are for the boys, Sundays, Sundays are for walk-offs. Walk -offs. I like it. It's all you need. I don't know about you guys, ball. but winning is pretty fun. I think I like to win. It's, I think it's I like it. It's like we win a lot here in Oklahoma. It's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's a, it's a culture, but we have it here. All right, well, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, Colin and Reagan will debate whether Trey Young or Brady Manick will score more points in their OU careers. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is now time for Face Off. Guys, we all know that Trey Young and Brady Manick have been putting up points here at OU in their freshman seasons. But my question for you guys is, when it is all said and done, which of those two will have scored more points in their OU careers? Tough question. That's an interesting question. Because you have Trey, who, you know, probably will be done after this year, mm -hmm. just thinking, you know, realistically. Right. Brady Manick probably will get four years. Yeah. I'm going to still go with Trey Young. The guy has 793 points after Saturday. He's looking to become the first player in Big 12 history to score 800 points in the regular season. 800 points. Unbelievable right there. I don't know if we're going to see a guy like this that can score as well as he does for a very, very long time long time. Yeah. Trey Young's amazing. He's really, I mean, last year it was, you know, 20 points is a lot of points for a guy to score. Now Trey Young's putting up almost 30 every single night. And it's kind of just like, eh, well, it's another night for Trey Young. So, off night. I mean, I mean, he's a remarkable We're taking it player. for granted, honestly. Uh, realistically, I think a lot of people should really look into what Trey Young's doing this season. This kid is really putting OU basketball back on the map. 800 points. Two more games still. Two more games. But you want to know the trick here? Brady Manick's got three years as opposed yeah. to two games. So I'm going to go with Brady Manick, and here's why. Look, when this guy plays well, this whole team plays well. We know that. And when he finally gets that three-point shot going, he has a pure shot and can put up points in an absolute hurry. And once Trey Young leaves for the NBA, he's going to be able to take over as the leader of this basketball team and consistently be the go-to option out there on the perimeter. i got to tell you, I think this, this kid, as he continues to develop, will have a really bright future and a solid career. He'll have a huge point total moving forward, especially because all he does is just shoot three-pointers. At the end of it all, strong point total and potentially 
a legendary but basketball he's no player young. in Oklahoma. He's, he's, no, he's no Trey Young, but he's going to be here at Oklahoma for a while. So. 800 points, though. Yeah. Come on, man. Hey, oh, 800, but you hit a couple threes. You're going to get close, right? Fine. I think we Fair need to promise each other that in about three years we'll meet back in this room and we'll see who won. We'll Ooh, see if Brady has more points. Right. Deal? deal? It's on. It's on, Sounds buddy. Good. It's on. Sounds good. Well, guys, I'm with Carly. She has an audience question for you guys. Which track and field event would you most like to participate in? Good question. Okay, well, um, so first, first of all, not really a fan of the whole running thing. Me neither. But, but I'm going to have to go with the 400 because I am not fast enough for the whole, you know, 100-meter sprint. So, and thinking about doing a mile makes you want to kind of throw up. So, so the 400 is just one lap. You get it over with. Just get it and done. move on and drink some Gatorade. Yeah. I'm run set. around, run around, and get, get it all done, right? Yep, just one lap. Let's call it good. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, I would say javelin throw, but from what I've heard, that isn't actually a collegiate track and field event. And while our athletes could certainly do it, I think it's a good idea that I don't get to throw a giant spear around. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is the long jump, and here's why. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say I have bunnies. Because I do not. But I feel like I could master the art of falling forward really, really far. So give me a chance to get my momentum going and then just let me dive. This, this is what it would look like. Good. Oh. I can get farther than that right now. Oh. 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 Look at that. Gold. Thank you. I really like to see you guys participate in these events. We can I think it would be pretty, pretty interesting. Too. Look at that. All right, guys, show me your viral videos for the week. All right, well, I think most of you guys were watching the, you know, the Warriors Thunder game the other night, and Zaza kind of had the fall on Russ, and he thinks it was just kind of, you know, he got brought down, and Russ said, not so fast, it was a dirty play. Mm. But afterwards, a reporter decided to ask Russell Westbrook about it, and we all know that doesn't really go very well, and so this is just pure entertainment right here. Just take a look. Oh, uh, what do you mean, what happened? What do you think, what happened? I don't know. I couldn't see. Don't that. lie. Don't lie. You couldn't see. You saw the answer replay four times. What, what happened? You fell on your leg. Thank you. Don't ask me a dumb question you know the answer to. Sheesh. Yeah. Uh, if we ever have a chance Sheesh. to interview him, I'm sending you to talk to him. Well, I'm not going to talk, so you're going to have to start yeah. coming up with no some questions. No dumb questions to Russell Westbrook. Yeah. That was an interesting game all around, but here's the thing. If you're a Thunder fan, a Warriors fan, it doesn't matter what your team is. I think at the end of the day, we're all team good boys. That's right. In my second viral video, I'm bringing out a dog video. And this one is Scooby, the balancing chihuahua. Look at him. Move over to the other basketball. Can I get a slow motion replay, please? Look at the form, the skill. He sticks the landing. I tell you what, I give that right there. That's a perfect 10 across the board. Absolutely love it. Hey, I've heard that that's a halftime performance. Can we get them to the LNC, please? I'm not really Scooby. a fan of chihuahuas. Chihuahuas? I like dogs, but not chihuahuas. Mm. Unpopular opinion. Yeah, I, lost I think you might you might lose some votes because of that, but we'll see you guys. I'm it's time Kenneth, to vote so. <laughs> for the winner of Face Off. To cheer the letters for who you think won. Who thinks it was Reagan? Yeah. Killed it. What did I tell you? What about Colin? Congrats, Colin. You're two and zero. Oh. Good job, buddy. <laughs> We're going to take another break, but when we come back, we'll catch up with one of OU's biggest stars. Stay with us. Special thanks to our Cornerstone Television partners, Chesapeake Energy, Riverwind Resort, Anheuser-Busch, OU Outreach, and OU Medicine. Welcome back. Some of us here on SportsPad are involved in a brand new show called Across the Board. Today we'll give you a small preview of an across-the-board story that Sooner Sports Pad's Shiloh Sellers did on gymnastics phenom Maggie Nichols. In 2016, Maggie fell one place short of making the USA Olympic team and set her sights elsewhere, to Norman, Oklahoma, where she showed that being a freshman said nothing as for her and her talents. And in her short OU career, Maggie has been nominated for the Honda Award, set OU program records, and nine weeks into her freshman season, accomplished a longtime goal for Emmy Gymnast, a gym slam. I feel like a lot of things are going through my head just because I got a 10 on every event except for bars. It was the last event I couldn't get a 10 on, but 
when I finally got it, it was a great feeling, and um, I was kind of like in shock a little bit just because it's kind of like a rare thing to do, so um, accomplishing that was amazing and a great feeling. But due to various injuries, Maggie has had to push her body in order to stay on top. She had to really work hard to get to the end of the season, and um, I know it was really hard for her, but she just did it because she knew that she had the team behind her, and um, I don't know we were all there supporting her, and she just pushed to her best abilities to complete the season the way she could. Although many see gymnastics as an individual sport, in college, it's all about team dynamic, and Maggie plays a large role for the Sooners. Definitely a leader on the floor. Um, she last season got our MVP freshman of the year you know obviously when she goes out there people trust her they watch her and they're they have the utmost confidence that she's gonna sail through um, they almost probably expect her to get a 10 every time she goes out there which is a tough expectation to have um, but they they definitely know she's gonna kill it we get coffee every morning from 7-eleven or after practice from 7-eleven and um, we'll take pictures and document it every day so that's something kind of fun but you can bet whatever Maggie's up to, that she's bringing the swag. That's the polish that shows her elite training. That's but right. My goodness. Now expect a big score. <laughs> now let's hear from our guests, Vernon Turner and Jess Woodard. Thanks for coming, guys. All right, recently you guys participated in the Big 12 Indoor Championship and took home six conference titles, five on just the second day. What was it like taking home all that hardware? Um, honestly, I just think that it was amazing to see all the performances because a lot of the people weren't um, favored to win. So, like, when the underdogs come through, it's always great. Um, it was just amazing to celebrate it with everybody on the team. It's a good team effort for the first time in a while. So we all we had planned throughout practice and throughout that week to all come together, and we did. We accomplished some things. It was a good team. And, and for you, Jess, you took on the first Big 12 title on day two. How big was that being a senior and all? I think that in my final Big 12s, it was obviously a goal just to go for it and um, come out a champion. But as well, I wanted to set the tempo for the rest of the girls' team um, that Saturday and hopefully give our best effort at a championship and we ended up getting third so I think that we did a pretty good job. And for you, you're fourth in the world in high, not country, world in high jump. Let's see a smile. <laughs> so you're, you're fourth in the world in high jump. How big is that for you? Um, I mean, to be so young, it's a good thing, but I'm pushing to get number one by hey. the time. That's the attitude. That's the attitude. Hey, outdoors is coming up here pretty soon. How much fun is that going to be for you guys coming up? Outdoors is always fun. It's mm -hmm. warm. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, and then we get all of our outdoor athletes to come as well. There's a couple of events that don't happen indoors. So it's a definitely a full team effort as the season progresses. And I'm excited for it. Yeah. I've never done indoor before in my life. So I can't wait for outdoor. <laughs> I'm just ready for it to be hot again. So. Yeah. All right, well, some of you guys are going to find out about your NCAA futures pretty soon. Mm -hmm. How exciting is that right there? Um, super exciting. NCAAs is next week, so we're ready to get to work and hopefully bring home some hardware. Yes. Right, Madeline Roberts has an audience question for you. That's right. Carly has a question for you, too. Who would win in a race between you two? Oh, 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 definitely Bernie. Oh, oh, <laughs> I would have to give it to him. They're both saying the opposite thing. I don't know. It's really interesting. Prove it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the studio. Maybe next week we'll, we will prove it, but we are going to take a break for now. Don't go anywhere. Dynamic Duos is up next. Sports pad, which is dynamic duos. Before the show, I asked Jess a series of questions about herself, and now Vernon will attempt to answer them correctly. Do you feel ready? Are you ready for this? Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you are honest, but I think you'll do a pretty good job. Let's go. Question number one What is Jess's favorite cheat meal? Is it A, ice cream, B, pizza, C, a huge steak, or D, brownies? Show me huge steak. Brownies. 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 Let's see. 
Oh. Oh. You were on the right track though with the dessert. You were on the right track. It's okay, I like them too. I like all those, honestly. All right, question number two. We can get back on track here. If Jess could play another sport, what sport would she play? Is it A, soccer, B, basketball, C, football, or D, golf? Basketball? Basketball, let's see. Basketball! You got one! Good job! Question number three. Who is Jess's favorite former OU athlete? Is it A, Sam Bradford, B, Blake Griffin, C, Lauren Chamberlain, or D, Joe Washington. I'm going with Lauren Chamberlain. Lauren Chamberlain, I love her. Oh, it was I Joe. I love Lauren though. Lauren's great. You love Lauren, I love Lauren too. All right, question number four. I know you guys aren't really runners, but if she could choose an animal to describe her running style, which animal would she choose? Is it A, gazelle, B, lion, C, wildebeest, or D, cheetah? Cheetah. D cheetah. Oh, lion. Those animals are kind of similar. Yeah, so they are. They're pretty similar. I'm a little All right. bit slower. One last question. If Jess could participate in a Winter Olympic event, which one would she choose? Is it A, bobsledding, B, curling, C, snowboarding, or D, ice skating? Snowboarding. Oh, bobsled. How do you feel like you did? I got a hoop. <laughs> you got one right. That's pretty good. Maybe you all get to know each other a little bit better now. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching Center Sports Bad. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Be back here next Monday, same time, same place. Good night, Center Nation.